Good morning, good people, and thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dan. Uh, welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Taos on this second Sunday in Advent. Uh, we are so glad that all of you are with us, whether you're newcomers, first timers, uh, old timers, any of that. Um, announcements this morning I've got a couple. Um, the first is what we just uh, just said a second ago, today is Communion Sunday, so please feel free to grab something to eat. Uh, it's we're, we're doing Christmas cookie communion, if you have Christmas cookies, so um, you'll have a chance to show those off, but go and grab something to eat and something to drink. Uh, other announcements, pull them up. Participants. Uh, to those who are joining us on Facebook, uh, we see you there and welcome. Please drop a line. Good morning, Sandy and Jim. Uh, please drop a line to let us know that you're there. My internet's acting up again, which is why I'm messing. You can see my hands, my computer. All right. Um, another announcement this morning, immediately after worship, we will have my favorite Presbyterian meeting, the nominating committee meeting to nominate, or the congregational meeting to nominate the nominating committee. Um, so that is selecting the people who will be nominating elders and deacons for next year. Uh, the slate before you is Chair Joan Doolittle, Ada Randall, Ashley Hauser, Gilda Gaunt, and Lori Weber. Um, we'll take nominations from the floor and we'll just be doing that immediately after worship. So if you can hang on for a quick second, that would be wonderful. Um, other announcements in your bulletin, it says that we're doing the prayers of the people separately. Uh, we'll be doing that during the communion liturgy. It's, it's in there twice. So that was my mistake. When we skip it, don't worry, we'll get there. And let's see. Our Christmas Eve service is officially scheduled on Zoom for 7.30, the night of Christmas Eve. It'll be at this same link. The link and bulletin will be sent out. Feel free to invite anyone. Uh, we will have candles, so that will be really sweet. Um, and finally, oh, this week is Christmas Cookie Communion. Next week is Deck the Halls or Deck Yourself. And I think Amy Jo might have something to say about that. So. Uh, looking, looking at everyone, are there any other announcements? Amy Jo, I know you had some. Well, first of all, yes, deck the halls next week. And, you know, you're welcome to put Christmas decorations behind you or in front of you and display. There will be a Christmas tree Sunday, so you don't necessarily want to do the Christmas tree yet. But if you have nothing else to deck, please Deck yourself. Or your husband. Or your husband or your wife. <laughs> or, your neighbor or your friend. But yes. So, you know, lovely jewelry is one thing, but I'm looking for my um, my red uh, candle earrings that light up. So that's what I'm thinking when I'm thinking deck yourself. <laughs> All your Christmas stuff. <clears throat> Okay, and then going back to, as Jenna was saying, the Christmas Eve service with lessons and carols, um, we're, we're looking for some readers. So if anybody's interested in reading a small portion, this is not being a liturgist, this is just reading a small little bit, uh, please let me know by email um, so that I can schedule some people. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Amy Jo. Um, I'm getting messages that there is a little, the Facebook feed may be messing up a little bit or going fuzzy. Um, hang on. It'll be okay. We'll get it figured out. Um, is it, um, it looks like it's still going. So 
Um, and, and to those on Facebook, we're grateful you're there. Welcome. Um, I see there's several people I've seen hi from Jim and Sandy and from Nancy, and we're thrilled that y'all are there. Um, one last announcement is that we are still, they are trickling in the pledge cards and the donations to the capital campaign. Um, we are over 50% of the way to our pledge goal, but our session meeting is fast approaching where we have to set our budget. Um, and so if you wanna shut me up and have me stop talking about pledge cards and worship, go ahead and just send yours in if you haven't already. Um, if you have, thank you so much. And yeah, we'll look forward, look forward to me not making announcements about that anymore. Um, and I hear Joan has an announcement. I do, just a reminder to people to look at the mission momentum. We are collecting um, new children's hats and mittens uh, for the uh, distributed care table and also uh, new socks to be given to the men's shelter. Um, one thing that I neglected to put in the mission momentum was that we will be collecting on Christmas, well, anytime in December, actually, um, offering the joy, Christmas joy offering. And that's the fourth of the Presbyterian special offerings for the year. <clears throat> and the joy offering uh, provides assistance to both current and retired church workers in time of need and development of future leaders at Presbyterian related schools and colleges, especially those equipping communities of color. So if you would like to give to any of those be very welcome. Wonderful. Thank you, Joan. Any other announcements or shall we start with the lighting of the Advent candle? All right. I don't see any. So Jim and Colleen, take it away. Lighting the Advent Candle of Peace. We light one candle for peace. Because the world is broken and the weight is long, but we refuse to be frozen by fear. Peace comes in fits and starts. A deep breath, a courageous truth, a humble heart. Prepare the way, she whispers, for the Lord comes to make the broken whole. So we light one candle because it only takes one. Christ is with us. The opening hymn is Comfort, Comfort, Now My People. Purple hymnal number 87, blue hymnal number three. Play. 
praises plain. Let your hearts be true and humble, as befits God's holy reign. For the glory of the Lord, now on earth is shed abroad, and no flesh shall see the token, and God's word is never broken. Please call me, join me now in the call to confession. Every valley is lifted up, every mountain made low. Now the glory of the Lord is revealed for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin together. Gracious, Gracious God, God, your prophets call us to prepare the way of the Lord. Forgive us when we stand in the way of your promises, instead of preparing the way for your good news. Forgive us when we let your challenging words roll off our lives rather than let them spark change. Forgive us when we walk around a neighbor in need rather than seizing an opportunity to show compassion. Forgive us, O Lord, and grant us assurance that the glory of your coming does not depend upon the righteousness of your followers. Forgive us, O Lord, and set us free to try again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ comes into the world not to judge, but to forgive. We who are in Christ are a new creation, which means that whatever you walked in with today, set it down. You are forgiven. Wherever you've been, whatever you've done, whatever fear or grief or shame from the past you hold on to, it's washed away. God has already forgiven you. And wherever we go in this journey of life, we go with the power and the reassurance of Christ and we will be always forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. Hallelujah forevermore. Holy One, giver of all light, lift up our hearts and minds to Christ, the morning star that never fades. By the light of your Holy Spirit, reveal to us your saving word and lead us to offer our lives to you in service and in love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> Comfort my people, says our God. Comfort them. Encourage the people of Jerusalem. Tell them they are, have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. I have punished them in full for all their sins. A voice cries out, prepare in the wilderness a road for the Lord. Clear the way in the desert for our God. Fill every valley, level every mountain. The hills will become a plain and the rough country will be made smooth. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all mankind will see it. The Lord himself has promised this. A voice cries out, proclaim a message. What message shall I proclaim, I ask? Proclaim that all mankind are like grass. They last no longer than wild flowers. 
Grass withers and flowers fade when the Lord sends the wind blowing over them. People are no more enduring than grass. Yes, grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God endures forever. Jerusalem, go up on a high mountain and proclaim the good news. Call out with a loud voice, Zion. Announce the good news. Speak out and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah that their God is coming. The sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, bringing with him the people he has rescued. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs together and carry them in his arms. He will gently lead their mothers. The word of our God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our second reading comes from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. The Lord says, Bethlehem Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in Judah, but out of you I will bring a ruler for Israel whose family line goes back to ancient times. So the Lord will abandon his people to their enemies until the one who is to give birth has her son. Then his fellow countrymen who are in exile will be reunited with their own people. When he comes, he will rule his people with the strength that comes from the Lord and with the majesty of the Lord God himself. His people will live in safety because people all over the earth will acknowledge his greatness and he will bring peace. When the Assyrians invade our country and break through our defenses, we will send our strongest leaders to fight them. The word of our God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Angels from the realms of glory bring your flight o'er all the earth. You who sang creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, you have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. All creation join in praising God the Father, Spirit, Son. Evermore your voice is raising to the eternal three in one. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Dan. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Mark. The very beginning, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Listen for what God's Spirit is saying to God's church. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So here's a funny 2020 moment. If you lost my video for a second, it's because my phone is telling me that I need the charger. So give me two seconds, pray and talk amongst yourselves and I'm gonna recharge myself, two seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Dan, perfect. Y'all, I don't even know what words describe 2020 but here we are and thanks be to god for that will you pray with me may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you O oh god our rock and our redeemer amen Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by, yet in thy dark street shine. The everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. It's sweet, it's beautiful. A Little Town of Bethlehem is one of those songs that takes us back to, as another carol says, olden days and golden days of yore. For those who may not have been with us last week, we are humming our way through Christmas carols this Advent season. During this year's strange and difficult Christmas season, we as a church are preparing the way of the Lord by singing the songs that tune our hearts to the blessings of this time. O Little Town of Bethlehem is a carol that many of you have told me is one of your favorites. It's an American Christmas classic written by an Episcopal priest named Phillips Brooks in 1868. Three years before this carol was first performed in Brooks's church, Reverend Brooks had taken a trip to Palestine and walked the streets of Bethlehem himself. He rode on horseback out to the field they call the shepherd's field and looked into the caves in which shepherds used to take their refuge from the cold. 
He went to midnight mass on Christmas Eve at the Church of the Nativity, a Constantinian era church built over the spot where tradition has it that Jesus was born. Reverend Brooks wrote about this experience in his journals. It had a profound effect on him. Any of you who may have walked in a place that you consider holy, perhaps can understand. And so he started writing the lyrics to this hymn and three years later, 1868, he asked the music minister of the church where he was serving in Philadelphia, a man named Louis Redner, to compose a tune so that the children's Sunday school could sing it for their Christmas service. You'll notice if you look in your hymnal that the name of the tune is St. Louis. That's a little joke calling the music minister the saint. Redner thought on the project and he kept putting it off. He said he could never get the inspiration quite right. And then as the story goes, the night before the Christmas service, he heard an angel whispering the tune, he says, and he composed the song that we know today. Is born of Mary. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. Oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to all on earth. It makes sense doesn't it, that a little town of Bethlehem started out as a children's song. The tune is gentle and lilting. The words are calm and diminutive. It's the little town of Bethlehem, gentle and meek souls who receive the dear Christ who enters in. The meter and the internal rhyming structure resemble a nursery rhyme or maybe a lullaby. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the hopes and fears of all the years, etc., etc. The carol is peaceful and it is sweet. Maybe one could argue a little too sweet. We sing the lilting lullaby tune. But we who follow Jesus know, don't we, that the events of Christmas sounded more like a teenage girl crying out in labor pains, giving birth to the Messiah. We think of fires and Christmas trees, but we know that Jesus was born into the smells of a barn full of cows and sheep and weary shepherds stopping by to pay homage to the undignified birth of the Lord. We sing about chestnuts roasting on an open fire and carolers demanding figgy pudding, but Christmas perhaps tasted more like the locusts on which John the Baptist munched as he cried, prepare the way of the Lord. A taste I don't think could be made better by the wild honey in which he dipped them. And y'all, that's just the birth part. This sweet little baby lying in the manger will grow up to be Jesus, the revolutionary, the boundary breaker, the one who turns over tables, touches lepers, eats with prostitutes and tax collectors, and goes on to offend every political and religious leader around, so that in the end, he is publicly killed as an enemy of the state. <laughs> so much for meek and mild, huh? Our culture likes to sentimentalize Christmas. I do too. There's nothing I love more than a good sappy Christmas movie, but the truth is 
Christmas is messy and it's uncomfortable. And this year, I'm actually finding great relief in that. Because this year, Christmas does feel uncomfortable. Right now, the so-called most wonderful time of the year feels bittersweet or maybe just plain bitter. Loved ones in the hospital, dying, dead. Christmas festivities and traditions being canceled for public safety. Families separated by borders or the dangers of travel or simply the dangers of enclosed spaces. Lonely hospital patients who can't even have their loved ones by their bedsides to hold their hands. It's Christmas, sure, but this year nothing feels right about that. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. All this is true. The pain and the sorrow. And still there's no way around the picture that O Little Town of Bethlehem paints. This hymn is so beloved precisely because it is such a gentle, comforting hymn. Maybe that's the point. You know, Phillips Brooks, the man who wrote this lullaby hymn, was a thriving, successful, happy young pastor, sure, but he was no stranger to sorrow. As a minister, Reverend Brooks walked his congregation in Philadelphia through the tragedy and turmoil of the American Civil War in which Brooks's own brother served and was killed. Reverend Brooks was an outspoken abolitionist and a chaplain to some of the first battalions of freed African-American soldiers in the Union Army. And the year that he traveled to Palestine and began writing this hymn, 1865, well, that's the year the Civil War ended and the year that President Lincoln was assassinated. Philip Brooks was a man acquainted with sorrow and suffering, with trauma and oppression. He was a person living in one of the most turbulent moments in American history. And still he wrote this hymn. Maybe he recognized that paradoxical truth of human life, that there is still joy in the midst of suffering, still room for peace in the middle of war. Maybe he had faith that even as the nations rage, God's purposes are still worked out in the silence and stillness of night. Maybe he heard the voice of the prophet Isaiah calling out in the wilderness, comfort, comfort ye my people, speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Cry to her that her penalty is paid. In a few minutes, we will celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper using Christmas cookies instead of bread. This year, we can't have our annual Christmas cookie exchange like we usually do. So instead of baking cookies, we are breaking cookies. 
and calling them Christ's body. And some could argue, and maybe they'd be right, that the theology here is a little dubious. Maybe. This is my body broken for you hardly sounds like sugar and spice and all things nice. Maybe. Or maybe Christ's coming. As messy and uncomfortable as it is, is also still sweet. Maybe the light still shines even when the darkness feels overwhelming. Maybe it's worth noting that Brooks writes the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Maybe both are true. Maybe that's the whole point. In 1865, as in 2020, Christmas came into a world of discomfort, tragedy, and trauma. And somehow, the carol reminds us, somehow, the coming of Christ is still yeah. sweet. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels their great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Friends, join me in singing the whole hymn, A Little Town of Bethlehem, number 121 in your purple hymnal, number 44 in your blue. Let us sing together. Just the great. 
bring glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Friends, Christ comes and brings us peace, even when it feels like peace is far away. So let us share that peace with one another. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. So with you. I invite y'all to put your phones on or computers on gallery view and take a look at the body of Christ around you and all these good people and share peace with one another. Peace of Christ be with all of you. Peace of Christ peace. be with you as well. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with everyone. Peace of Christ to all. Peace from our sanctuary. How's the temp, Mark? 60 degrees today. <laughs> Better than 42. They can't get the heat up. Peace had it to up. To all of you, uh, like I said, the prayers of the people will be part of our communion this morning. Uh, this is another you you okay. go grab a Christmas cookie or anything to eat and to drink for communion. Um, at this time, we collect the offering. It's a little hard to pass the plate, even as I see all y'all's little squares. But we can give and we can give back. We give to the church, we give to those who are in need in our community. We give, as you were reminded this morning, to the men's shelter and to share table and to all those places that are the mission of our church. And we give to keep our church building going. Uh, we have a cleared out mold and a nearly finished new roof and a lot of good work going on thanks to your generous donations to the capital campaign. And we're able to do this even in COVID times thanks to the support that we give to our church. So I invite you to, you can give online uh, at firstpresbyterianTaos.com or you can mail a check to the church. Um, and if you haven't filled out a pledge card for this year, I invite you to consider doing so. That allows your session to make a faithful budget. So knowing that we are living within our means and yet having the faith to give, sometimes even beyond our means, trusting that God will provide. So shall we sing a doxology, Mark and Anne? <laughs> Christ of people here below, praise Holy Spirit evermore, praise triune God whom we adore. Amen. Dear Lord, this Advent season we wait with love and we give with love. Love for you, our God. Love for your beautiful people. Receive these generous offerings and use them for your works of love in our world. Amen. 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 As we come to this time of communion and of prayer, I invite you, if you're joining us on Facebook, to drop your prayer requests in the comment section. If you're joining us on Zoom, then you can offer those in the chat section or aloud in just a few moments. Friends, taste and see that the Lord is good. Christ comes to us every year, every day. We get to feed on Christ's own self. So let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. How can we thank you, O God, for sun and moon and stars, for breath and life and all things good, for your steadfast promise and faithful love, for the day that is surely coming when all things will be made new. With saints and angels and with the whole creation, we join the ancient and eternal hymn, saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, holy God, for Jesus. Born in the stillness of a Bethlehem night, he came to be your living word, to baptize us with the spirit and with fire, to feed the hungry, to humble the mighty, and to announce the good news of your coming realm. With thanksgiving and praise, we offer ourselves to you, sharing this holy meal in a time that is bitter, a taste of something sweet. Remembering Christ dying and rising and praying, come, Lord Jesus, for great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. A voice cries out in the wilderness, let us prepare the way of the Lord. And God, like your prophets, we dare to cry out that you would make a way in the wilderness for our world. To bring justice, love, and peace to every land. To restore the goodness of your creation. To let your tender mercy shine light on those who wait in darkness. Joining our voices to those crying out, we lift up now in silence and aloud the prayers on our hearts this morning. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray? It's like prayers for the people of Alaska up in the Haines and Juneau areas that have just had horrendous rain, seven inches in one night and are now experiencing mudslides and avalanches. And that even includes the area where our favorite Patsy lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for our youngest son, Dan, who is going through mediation this week um, and dealing with the tough issue of custody. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. From Facebook, we have prayers from Joanne Ortiz. She says, continue prayers of protection and healing for Debbie Spiker, recovering from COVID, doing well. And for my mother, Dulce Romero, as she remains faithful. And for Joniva Cardenas, one of our own, who is safe at home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. From Tina Trujillo on Facebook, prayers for everyone struggling during these scary times. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. From Julia Armstrong, she says, please pray for the safety of my husband, Roy, as he travels to Dallas to teach this week. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, I see the uh, Jim and Colleen. I think y'all are still muted. There we go. 
I'd like to request prayers for the comfort and peace for Colleen with the loss of her brother, Gary, who succumbed to COVID this past Tuesday. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You are now. From Dave Wasserman, prayers for Marnie who has chemo tomorrow. God in your mercy. Hear our, our prayers. prayers. If I can't see your hand, feel free to go ahead and just unmute yourself and talk. For all of the people who are suffering and are hungry throughout the world, um, we all need to pray for them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Anne and Dennis Gastineau say, for the many homeless we see in both Phoenix and Taos in these cold times, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to pray for a beloved cousin who for a beloved cousin who has an addiction problem and that he will be moved to seek help. God, in your mercy. God, in your love. Hear our For the fires, the terrible fires in California, uh, I ask the Lord's help. God. God, in your mercy. God, we lift up all these things, words spoken and words unspoken, unto you, trusting that you hear us. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O oh God. Upon this bread, upon this cup, upon these people, upon us, Christ's body and blood, given in love for the world, make us one in the Spirit, one in the church, and one with Christ our Lord. Make us gentle, joyful, thankful people, serving our neighbors and worshiping you alone. Keep us in the peace of Christ until you gather us at your table in glory. For even now, a voice is crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he died, our Lord Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Así también después de la cena tomó la copa y dijo esta copa Es el nuevo pacto confirmado en mi sangre. Cada vez que beban, háganlo en memoria de mí. De esta manera proclamamos la muerte del Señor hasta que él vuelva. Friends, these are gifts of God for the people of God. And as we partake, I invite you to put your phone, computer on gallery view, and take a look. Show us the uh, 
the bread and cup that you have, if you have a particular story to your Christmas cookie, uh, I'll tell you mine was made as a gift by my friend Pam and she made a bunch of them. I've eaten all of them. I had to hide this one for myself so I would have a Christmas cookie to share with you today for communion. What else do we have? Beautiful, tasty. I saw biscotti, that was good. Ooh, a bright green Christmas tree. Ritz. Ritz, uh, nice. A sugar cookie that uh, the recipe was mom's. Um, and it has oh. a pignon, I mean, a pecan in the middle of it. Pecan. No, pecan. The, these are the important debates. Wonderful friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Oh. Taste and see that even when times are bitter, our God is sweet. Will you pray with me? God, our hope, we give you thanks that you have given us this foretaste of justice, righteousness, and peace, and of the sweetness of your promised new creation. Strengthen us with this heavenly food as we walk through the days ahead, seeking to serve you. Lead us to live in joyful expectation of Jesus Christ coming into the world. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join us in our closing hymn, Angels we have heard on high. In your purple hymnal, it's number 113. In your blue hymnal, number 23. Take it away, Mark and Dan. Angels we have heard. Yeah, we have heard. Mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria. stay for a moment. Uh, we're about to have a congregational meeting. I'm going to give the benediction before we do that and ask Jazz to stop the Facebook stream after that because I'm not sure we need to stream our Zoom congregational meeting. But if you're on Facebook with us and you're a member of this church, feel free to click that link.
the comments and join so your voice can be heard and you can vote. Uh, and then we'll stick around for fellowship with our cookies. But first friends, go forth into this world that is both at war and yet has peace, that is both full of suffering and yet has joy. Go forth into the darkness and know that even there shines Christ's everlasting light. Go forth to see one another, go forth to serve one another. And as you go, may joy and nothing less guide you on the way. May you be blessed and oh, may you be a blessing. And may light, love's own crucified, risen light, guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. Oh,